The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Nui Scruggs. Football greetings! Football greetings to you! Thank you for joining the Players Lounge brought to you by Tostitos. That is Danny McRae. Come on in. Heckma Harrison. In the building. In the house. I am Nui Scruggs, Barry Church. Uh, we'll join Barry Church. He'll come see us in April. Yeah, yeah. Next no, month. Barry know. Church will be back and join us next month, uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> lots to get into here. It's the off season. We're trying to figure out what this roster will be. <laughs> Just us? Just uh, Yeah, exactly. Just us, huh? Just us, huh? <laughs> People come ask me up in the streets. I'm sure they ask you, too. Like Scooby-Doo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We do it. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I I don't I don't exactly know. Um, so heck, this is what I want to get go around the table. What are your friends asking you? <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are you getting from your people? Boy, man, trying to trick me out of my spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ask me. No, this. Uh, the question is obviously, what are you guys doing from a front office standpoint? Are you even thinking about doing anything in free agency? Uh, you know, collectively, I, I'm impressed why, why guys that leave the organization in some manner seem like their stock goes up when they leave. And it's like, and that's the thing to me that is always pretty like surprising. You know, Doris Armstrong, all of a sudden, you know, he's Joe Green. <laughs> he's, you know, we're losing guys and losing people. And not to say that they didn't have any contributions at all, but those are the things that really kind of shock me is that the people that we lose, when we lose a, uh, Neville Gallimore, you know, all of a sudden now his stock it, it has gone up. You know, the, 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 the natives are rest, restless. And they want some some movement. They want to feel like, you know, the Cowboys are interested in winning next year. Right now, this sitting on your hands approach is not sitting well with people. Craig, what you got? Uh, man, listen, <laughs> they ask me the same thing they always ask me. Because everybody is Jerry. What's up with Jerry? Why Jerry doing, What's why up with Jerry? doing that? <laughs> you know, it's always Jerry, 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 Jerry. I'm like, hey, man, listen, I don't run the team. I, but this this right here. What's, what we got going on with the quarterback situation yeah. and and the cap restraint that we have going on because of it, yeah. it's something that I don't I don't believe that I've seen since I've like been able to understand the cap like I do now and the opportunities for for guys to get paid and then what happens when you bump it down the road and right. franchise like I haven't had the opportunity to see it this way. This is a very unique situation because the situation with with Dak's contract to me is one of we watched Russell Wilson do it to where he's getting paid 39 by Denver and then playing on a million dollar deal up in uh, Pittsburgh and if Dak Prescott if they if they don't do anything he's 60 million and then even when he's not here next year he's still on your cap for 50 plus yeah so which is like I I've, I've never yeah. I've never seen you be in a situation to where we still waiting we assumed that he was going to get paid already so you can get yourself some cap relief and then, you know, go get some players so you can be all in, and it hasn't happened. I think this is a very, very unique situation. My response to people is, I don't know. Hey, what's going I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I hear one thing, all in from the owner, but at the end of the day, we all know it's actions that matter. So it's like I, I hear the team in motion, going to do this, we're looking at that, and then the actions don't match the motion. And so at some point in time, I can just all, was the old line, Parcells, he said, all I can go by is what I see. And right now I'm not seeing movement. Uh, I'm seeing a, a situation with the quarterback, as you just talked about. There's, they're not signing him, so you're just kind of sitting here right now. And at this point in time, I'm just kind of waiting on the draft to see what needs get filled and, and where they go. Because if you're not spending any money, then I'm thinking you're going to go to the draft, address whatever needs you want to in the draft, and then after that, heck, but that's when you kind of go and say, all right, who else is on the market and where do we sign them? Because now their prices are going to go down because people have drafted folks. At that point, that's the only thing I can think of as I'm seeing it play out I'm, right now. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't bring up time, proof, and consistency here. Because time proof and consistency shows what we have done historically, at least since 2010, 
after Brandon Carr on the free agent market, first day, second day, first week, second week, has been has been about this. It's not. This is not abnormal. The only abnormal part about it is the quarterback situation. But we don't usually make big time moves in the first couple of weeks. You are. We do you know, lean on the draft, the Tyron yeah. Smiths, the Des right. Bryant's, the Ezekiel Ellis. We lean on on those opportunities to get our big time players, and then we keep them here. Yeah. But the last time, <laughs> I mean, we paid fifty for, for Brandon Carr. I think we got Greg oh, Hardy. Man. Was was a was a, another guy yeah. where you say, okay, well, he was supposed to become uh, come here and be a difference maker. But outside of that. It's I, yeah, few and far in between. It's so failure is, to launch. Yeah, this is this is normal. Failure to launch every year, and and we talked about a little bit last week about how coming into free agency, it's the dumb money immediately from the teams that have yeah. uh, the salary cap, and they're going to make moves. And and for me, we we threw those names out there, all these guys that have now been signed by other teams. Would that have satisfied you, or would you? It, it, it wouldn't have. I think you'd still be in a situation where you're asking the same questions on the offensive line. You're, you're still trying to find that continuity. You still want to know, uh, is Tyler Smith the, the guy that you're going to move out to left tackle? That, those questions have started to matriculate. You're starting to answer those questions now. I think the only thing that you have is the draft. Like you said, those seven picks or the compensatory picks that they have now, it makes you feel a little bit better about what they're going to do in the draft because Will McClay has had plenty of success. The thing to me, I'm with you. What are we doing in Dak's contract, and how does that correlate to getting guys signed like CeeDee Lamb yeah. and Michael Parsons? Because truthfully, I think what he answered to me, CeeDee Lamb answered the question last season that he is a number one. Correct. Wide receiver. So let's take that off the, the board. You're going to have to pay him $20 million a year. Okay. Correct. Fair. That's, right? That's mm -hmm. fair. It, you, even though Micah is locked and loaded in, as far as where he is in, in his draft pick and what they're paying him, you still have to start the conversation. Oh, and by the way, you can't do that unless you re sign or restructure Dak. All of those things right now, I don't think you take the glass off of the button and, and hit the panic button just yet because you still have time to get those things done. Now, to me, having Mike McCarthy coach under one-year deal, like that's the biggest head-scratcher to me for the organization. Like, What are we doing here? Because essentially you're tying this guy's hands and feet together and telling him, go out here and coach this team, that basically you don't have any power to these millionaire athletes. So that's – Look, as we go along and the, the things that are, are, are that boggles the mind are plenty, but I think when it comes down to the contracts right now, we have plenty of time to figure that out. And there isn't one guy that's out there right now that I say, okay, yeah, you got to make a trade right now for that guy. There's still plenty of meat. They, they off the market already. <laughs> they, they were out there. They were out <laughs> they but, was out, but that's they, a We missed them. Unfortunately, who, I will, in my opinion, I think who, we missed them. Who, tell me, who was that guy to you? Like, if you, if you sign that guy – I, I, I feel one, good one of those it. two running backs out of Saquon and Derrick Henry. I mean, you said one. You said Mike McCarthy's on a one-year deal, right? So even if you don't believe he's gonna run the ball, somebody's gonna come in here and run the ball. Right. Like they're gonna they're gonna find out a way to get that done. And I think I believe that if you had one of those guys on your squad, um, that Mike McCarthy would have found a way to run the ball more than 15, 16 times a game. But I think when you look at our running back room right here, right now, and you say, okay, we went and got a linebacker, uh, we're going to try to figure out how to shore that up. Outside of defensive tackle and running back, the biggest impact players were there on the running back market. That's your time proof and consistency right there. Yeah, because he's he hadn't shown you that he's gonna run the ball. And if you had Derrick Henry here, he wouldn't have carried the ball for 27, 20, well, 27 no. times because that's just not the MO of the team. Well, well no, but Tony Tony Pollard was at the beginning of the season was averaging fifteen to eighteen carries a game. Okay. I think I think that's a fair number to give Saquon Barkley or somebody 18 carries a game. And then especially if they're being more productive than what TP was being, then you're going to probably get more than 18 because you'll be in a situation where you're trying to milk the clock and, and, and run it out versus what we were doing last season. That's the scariest room to me. The, the, running, the running back, back room. room? Yeah, that's the scariest room. No, no, I'll disagree with you. Okay. okay? Uh, to me, your scariest room is the defensive line. Okay. Because what have we seen for three years? You want to beat the Cowboys, go run the ball on you want to look at the playoff losses? You've lost the teams who've decided to run the football on you. And Christian Wilkins was available, went to the Raiders. Chris Jones never got to the market. Leonard Williams was available, Seattle resigned him. And so Hankins is now in Seattle with Aiden Dirty. Yeah. So he's gone. We got, shoulder, we got shoulder surgery for somebody. Uh, Mozzie Smith. Mozzie. Mozzie Smith. Outfield training camp? 
So you got him uh, with the show. So, so you're now left with this guy who, you know, I don't know who, who, got, who got thin. And now they're trying to get him, get him beefed up again. So that's Neville Gallimore. Uh, say whatever you want, but he was the depth piece. Mm-hmm. He's gone. So I'm sitting here saying, okay, there's Osa Adigizua, who by Mike Zimmer's standards of his defensive lineman is a smaller guy. And you got your first-round pick last year who, who by all accounts, did not live up to being a first-round pick, now has shoulder surgery. And you're wondering, is he going to get weight back on? This, to me, is not just glaring. This, this is how you get to be 8-9. Because you've not only not fixed your problem, your problem has gotten worse. And I see these mock drafts, and they talk about offensive tackle. Like, does anybody look at what the Cowboys are as a football team right now? Because you talk about Saquon Barkley, he's in the division now. You know what you're about to get in mm-hmm. Philadelphia. Between Saquon and the push, tush, push. I mean, they're running the ball. <laughs> Dan That's Quinn cool. is now the head coach in Washington. Yeah. You know exactly. He already knows what the ills are. They're going right they, there. They're running the ball. They are running right at you here. And the Giants, I don't know how they fill Saquon's role, but it's pretty clear if you're Dayball, run at the Cowboys. I mean, you you make a valid point, and, and I'm gonna stay stay right there in that defensive line room, and that's why I was talking about guys like Chauncey Golston and the way that we used him as a tweener last year, and a guy that still is a part of that young group that you want to continue to develop, and Zimmer may have a plan for him, and you still have opportunity throughout OTAs and training camp to bring other defensive linemen in. It's just the fact that there hadn't been any movement there that I think you're starting to panic and starting to say to yourself, what the hell is going on? Mozzie Smith, we're going to say it again, he has to have the biggest jump from year one to year he two. He can't <laughs> because he's going to be out to training camp. <laughs> like, you but don't, that's, he had, you don't even he, had an opportunity like, to do like You're not going to see him again in physical. Danny, he can't, <laughs> this is a guy that cannot afford to, to, it's <laughs> happened already. Hey. He can't, he, can't so, it's ha- he lost weight last year, so the goal this year will be to, to do everything you can to put on some weight, which it may help him if he's having surgery because he won't be able to be as mobile as, as he was. But then it's still the technique because what we saw from him was just trying to use straight power when he first got in there minus the technique and it wasn't working for him. And then he lost weight. So when you get a guy like Zimmer to come in, he wants to have his hands on a guy like that. Hey, man, first round pick last year. We need to figure out how, how we can it. make you uh, better than you were in the previous year. You don't have the opportunity now outside of getting mental reps and watching um, and, and, and not, watching the field. You're, you're not like, buying the yeah. mental reps. No, no, well, no, not, not when you're a second-year player. A Tyron Smith, <laughs> yeah. mental rep, D-Ware, yeah, yeah. those are mental rep type of guys. <laughs> I got you. The, the, Mozzie Smith, say he's you know, second-year Guy, just I don't think any anybody could just do that in their second year of just sit there on the sideline and then and have to watch and and get better than you were last year, considering how it went for him last year. So and I don't I don't know this, uh, especially not having played this kind of level as a defensive lineman coming off shoulder surgery. When you do put him out there, what kind of what kind of reps and what kind of practice can he get out there so you don't hurt him? And by the way. The other Michigan player they took last year, School. tight end Luke Schoomaker, has shoulder surgery too. And what did we talked about with him? Hey, got to be a better blocker. So how are these two guys going to get up here and get to camp? And have to, got to, to bro, this, bro, this, it's this. hard, man. That's yeah. the game. And that's the game. So well, you what, Harbaugh to send, what did Jim Harbaugh send, send the Cowboys? Hey. <laughs> He called him and told him, I, I'll take care of y'all. I got you. He must but, have but those those two players were really good in college. I, uh, you know, they, they were really college good. College glory fades fast in the NFL. Uh, see, who you telling? I've seen him I've seen him many times. I've seen him many times. I've seen him many times. Just don't look the same. Mac, <laughs> Mac Jones. <laughs> don't look the same. Justin Fields. Goodness Unbelievable, God. man. So, so heck, man. <laughs> that, so, what, when you talk about that D-line, so now we got my man who's going to come back here. Uh, we don't know how much weight he's gaining. He's got the shoulder issue. And what do we know about Mike Zimmer? Mike Zimmer likes biggins yeah. up front. The Cowboys under Dan Quinn didn't have biggins. So can we t- – all right, Sam Williams. Where? Well, are we just going to move off to de- – go to defense yeah, You're going to no, – you know my inside? Ta- I'm just saying, a, a guy like this <laughs> – come on, let's, let's have this conversation. Mm-mm. Go well, ahead. That, uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, because you, you asked for this one. Yeah, I'm just, well, I mean, I, I think that – 
we're looking at this the, the cupboard is half full all right and we're saying that a guy like Sam Williams in his second in his what third now his third year can't be impactful on this defensive line under Zimmer I mean, obviously, we need more weapons, and those more weapons is in the tune of how many more bodies that we need? Two, three more guys in, in rotation? Well, you, you mean, you're talking about Sam Williams possibly bumping in to play on the interior defensive line? I mean, he already has. I mean, you, you saw him you saw him being used like that under Dan Quinn. I, I know, mean, and, and I think that our issue with Dan Quinn, because I love DQ. We still haven't been able to stop the run. I don't think Sam putting Sam Williams in there, especially when you know Zimmer likes a bigger guy. I don't think that's that's what we're. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some big, big old six uh, five three hundred. Hey man, a hey, double team whole point. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, just clog it up and make Kevin the running back. Like I'm, I'm looking for those type of guys. Sam Williams, as good as an athlete he is, blocking punts, doing all that stuff. I'm just talking about straight up size in the middle of the defense. I don't, I don't see him being able to hold up in that position when you play a team like. Philly, who's going to get in there and try to maul you, or any of the teams in the, in the league that, that focus on running the football. And I get it. We're having a conversation between the one-tech, three-tech, yeah, the, yeah. the big guys oh, in yeah, front. Yeah. Not, I'm, I'm looking at the holistic oh, defensive no, just, line. Okay, Because inside. I don't think that's been a huge issue. I don't think that out, the edges have been that big of an issue for us. I think it's, it's usually been that one and three technique that, yeah, that, 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 that worries me. That, that's what I'm looking for. And then just c- trying to – reconcile it with the fact that you've got a de- you're changing defensive coordinators and your defensive coordinator is bringing up the beef. Kevin Williams, Lynn Bell Joseph, these are not guys that the Cowboys have had here under Dan Quinn. And Joseph's available, not saying they should sign it, but that kind of guy is available. So do they wait till after the draft and hope that, okay, hey, man, now you're at the Dollar Tree price. Let's go ahead and jump <laughs> on you and, and get yeah, you on in well. here. Because that has been a strategy for a lot of teams and, 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 and players who don't get got in free agency. It's like, okay, well, guess what? Four teams filled needs. We kind of were talking to them before. I guess I better go over here. And that's a good strategy in terms of signing guys at low prices. But that's – that to me, that's concerning. Heck, uh, as much as people, you could line up an offensive line tomorrow. It may not be optimal, but you could line it up. Yeah. Right now, you got Osa. You got Mazi. Mazi with the shoulder. Yes. And it's tough. I, in, interior defensive line. I, I, you like, you know that. So, but who's out there though? It, that, that's also a thing. But that oh, to me, now, that, that, that to me now. is where where I look at the draft. When I see these mock drafts and offensive tackle that I see there, I just, I, I just shake my head. I'm like, no, no. Do you take another shot. I mean, you just took a shot last year going to get you an interior guy and it didn't work out. Do you you say, oh, we going back to back years? Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, yes. Man, I don't. Uh, yes. So I'm so nervous to throw the dice again at that point. I got I'm, I got PTSD oh, right oh, okay, now. Okay, okay. I, I've got I've got I've got I got a thought. About that, okay. and you never want to draft the offensive lineman first. Like th- this been this is five years ago no, right no, now. No, Every no, time no. I bring up offensive uh, lineman, you okay? Nah, I got a strategy. Okay, I got a five strategy. Years straight, heck. I got a five years straight. Heck. I got a strategy. Five years straight. I got a strategy. I got a strategy. Got a strategy. Please. All right. When, when we come back, this is a team. This <laughs> is a team. Please. I got it. When we come back, I got a first and second round strategy that I would love to see the Cowboys make. If I if I'm in the room, this is the strategy. I was like, guys, my ultimate strategy for rounds one and two would be this. I'll bring it to you next, right here on the Players Lounge, brought to you by. Tostitos on DallasCowboys.com radio. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites in a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want to munch. 
and that's mm. the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. There is no I in Dallas. There is no I in Heart either. No I in Blue Star or in Lone Star for that matter. And there's no I in How About Them Cowboys. Smirnoff knows there's no I in football. Football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks, home or away, we rally together. We cry together. And we always rally cry together because there's definitely no I in Cowboys fans. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to the Players' Lounge. Country Music's Party of the Year is back like never before. The Academy of Country Music Awards returns to the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco on May 16th. See the biggest stars in country music and watch unforgettable live performances. Limited tickets are available now at SeatGeek.com. All right. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> the strategist is back. Yeah. yeah. The this oh, this is gonna get him locked out the room. Man, y'all should have seen him, bro. He ain't writing stuff down, the, the uh, carry the one, all that. Come on, let's see what it you got. It looks like strategist. Rain Man right now. Uh, what you got? Okay. And that's and that's a real list. That's not that that uh that bad list that he you has. Know, yeah, yeah, every yeah. time I sit over here, I realize he's keeping double it's, books. Yeah, because yeah. one is in blue and the other one's in red. <laughs> and your yeah. past like yo, yo, yo. He, <laughs> he, he, got, he got two books. Working, <laughs> working for Daniel Snake. This <laughs> 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 the book I get in NFL. Well, what's up, what's up, what name just got in trouble? O- Otani? Otani, yeah. <laughs> Shohei. <laughs> you got the show he didn't, show he didn't know what's going on. He been keeping books. For a long time. Well, look, <laughs> the had, he didn't know. Rubber, rubber. He was just hitting. He was hitting pitching. He got two books. Okay, so, uh, by the way, Players Lounge brought to you by Tostitos, Danny McCray, Heckman Harris, I'm Dewey Scruggs. Here's my, my first round strategy mm, for the Cowboys. Okay, Offensive tackle out. Because I'm putting I'm putting Tyler Smith at the left tackle. Okay. okay. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Definitely. As Will McClay told me last year, we drafted him to be our left tackle, so I'm going to throw him out there. Okay. I'm going toward, toward the defensive line. That's a problem. You win in the trenches. You've been put out of the playoffs the last three years. You being in the trenches has been a problem. Vic Fangio put the blueprint out there. Ain't fixed the blueprint yet. So Texas has two big boys. Oh, absolutely they do. Byron Murphy won them, and then the defensive player of the year, uh, J- uh, Trevante Sweat. Sweat. Yeah. Give me one of those two guys, and I am hoping they go gaga for these quarterbacks in the first ten picks. That's they my don't. question. Are they projected to be there? Byron Murphy probably won't be there. I said we hoping. This is hoping. This is your strategy. Let, you finna give us. You finna give us a dream. Some I, dream picks. Who projected me, to be there when we sweat, pick, maybe. that we might we, get? We, we never know, you know? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. okay. We, we, you we, never we know. don't know. I mean, Anything six, possible? Six, six, All right. CeeDee <laughs> <laughs> right. Land. That's right, CeeDee Land. <laughs> Anything possible? Yes. This is a draft. All right, go ahead. Here you there, go. Are, okay. there, there are dumb teams out here. That's okay? right. So, All right. So, that, and that's why I talk about the quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, somebody going to get desperate up in here, and you start reaching for these dudes. Somebody going to get all – you hoping somebody get excited about Bo Nix. Go ahead. Jump up and get a Bo Nix up in here. Jump up and get a Penix. Sit up here, see five, six quarterbacks in That means guys like this can can fall. McCarthy. So, oh, McCarthy's going to be a top ten pick. Absolutely. Hurt is better than Jane Dell. But go ahead. We, 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 all right. That's what yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not a shock. Uh, so – that's where I'm looking at one of these two guys. Okay? Defensive line. Defensive line. Because mm-hmm. I need I need my I need my coordinator to have a big end up here. Mm-hmm. So there, round one. Round two, I'm going to get the center. You need somebody to snap the ball. There's an opportunity. Big kid from West Virginia, uh, Frazier, bigger than Biotish. Uh, a guy who's got rave reviews in terms of the kind of character and player that he was at no, West I love Virginia. Him. Yeah. So I get I, I address Two needs, but also two important phases of football. 
we're trying to win in the trenches. You've got a problem in the trenches. And when I think about the Cowboys the last two years being put out of the playoffs, they have lost on the offensive and defensive lines in those games, in my opinion. Address those in rounds one and two. There you go. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. And I think that with Tyler Smith moving out to left tackle that you can then focus on the interior. Center. Allegedly. 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 That's, yeah. this, is, this is my, my – This is Newey's strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's no, I'm we're... saying allegedly he's moving out. We're not sure. We'll see. We don't know yet, we'll but that, that would make sense. That w- yes. That, that would, all right? <laughs> that's where we get in trouble. That's where we get in trouble. But I'm, I, I love what, the, what you're thinking. Is, as far as Sweat, Sweat is a mammoth of a young man. I think Murray Murphy will, won't be there. I mean, he's just obviously the way that he plays. There's going to be some teams salivating to get a guy like that. Um, and he's really not as big a guy as people think. He just plays really big as far as stature uh, is concerned. Sweat, on the other hand, is yeah, he is bluebell eater right there. <laughs> um, that's a guy that you 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 possibly can. Play plug and play he's a day one guy right off the bus uh can play i've always i've always everyone's been pinpointing the center from oregon powers he has two last names mm-hmm. but he's 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 a really guy another one of those guys that you say plug and play he's a d- day one kind of guy so look you need guys like that right away you don't need a guy that to no development in this situation because you brought mozzie in and i think the first thing you saw was oh crap he needs to develop a little bit more and that's why you bring in hank and so look i am I am adamant about trying to shore up the interior. Uh, I don't know what everybody's thinking as far as wide receiver is concerned because, you know, look, that may be something that you can cherry pick later in the draft, but we're going to have to find out about that as well. Yeah. This is the toughest one. I understand the center thing. I'm a defensive player, so I do see that our our, our back, what is it, front seven is – Linebacker and interior defensive line. I don't know what linebackers. I like. I don't. I didn't get into all that, but I know we have an issue at linebacker. The same injury issue that we have currently with Mozzie Smith not being able to be there until training camp. Right now, we're looking at we have got Perkins and Overshawn is a guy who yeah. we expect to to really make an impact. Well, when is he going to be ready to play? Okay. So, what is our depth right now? One our starters, but then what is our depth at linebacker? Buddy Johnson and Marquise the Bell right now. <laughs> so, so I mean we have we have a lot of different places <laughs> yeah. where we have issues at. Um sure. so I have a hard time going center over defense in, in, in that case. I'm saying, okay, well, Dax gonna be making sixty. We got CD Lamb. I don't know what they're gonna do at running back, but I think we're gonna figure out a way to get some stuff done on offense because I think we still have the talent to do that. I think we are lacking the talent on defense to do what we need to do in order to come up big in those in, in those type of games. I think we just we are missing the talent and the availability of certain guys to be able to say, if all else fails, we're going to go out there and get a stop for you. When you were in elementary school as a youngster, um, Heckma, you'll remember the name. Chris Bean, you'll remember the name. Um, and they let Mark Stepnowski go, who was on Super Bowl teams with the Cowboys. And eventually they were playing a guy named Clay Shriver. Clay was not a good center. He was not Step. Not Step. He wasn't Frank Cornish. Uh, he wasn't John Giesick. Yeah. Any of the other guys who filled it. And it became a problem for Troy. And you just simply cannot try to get away at that position. You do need a next-level guy. And I think about what Kansas City has, with Creed Humphrey. I think about what the Eagles have had with Jason Kelsey. I think about uh, when Mark Stepnoski was here, or better yet, a guy that your Uncle Joe played with, um, Joe, uh, Mike Webster. Mike Webster, yeah. You get, in a, you get yourself a top-notch player there, it makes everyone better. Travis Frederick was sensational. Mm-hmm. I go back to that draft. I raise my hand. I criticize the pick because I thought the Cowboys should have taken a D-lineman in the first round. They didn't. Um, they traded with Minnesota. They went down, and then they took Travis Frederick, who most people thought was a second-round pick. They had done their research and thought that he was a plug-and-play guy. He wasn't All-American at Wisconsin, and they were 100% on point and got five years out of him because they got him in the first round. And I remember on draft day, Tony had, had told uh, Jerry Jones, thank you for the extra second. They were 100% right mm-hmm. about it. And I just feel like they need to address it because if you've got a good one, then you're all good. You don't have to worry about it. You got one with question marks, you got to slide some help over. People trying to bull rush the middle. It's it's just you when you're compromised, you just see it. 
if you're not compromised, then you're good. And I, I think Philadelphia is going to have a real tough year trying to replace the greatness of Jason Kelsey and what he did. So that's my thing, Danny. And I don't want to wait past – you definitely can't – If you, you better do it no later than round three. You just cannot try to skate by at that position. That's just me. Um, I, I just think it's too valuable. I think I, maybe I got recency bias or something. I just remember what Green Bay did to us, running all over the place, and all the other teams that beat us and went out there and out It's not recency bias; it happened. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But those were like these. These what? are these are defensive issues that we've had. But the new and dog plan addresses that in round one. The who? The new dog plan. I got, got, we addressed it, baby. What round about one. your linebackers? Okay. What like what like what ad- what addresses that you got two even with Overshawn coming back you're gonna have a guy in his first year fully playing the game Danny like it's, Danny, it's, we, it's, got, we got we got what we got more rounds <laughs> yeah I know yeah we got we got, we, more got more, we, we got more rounds for everybody so now now I'll say this that kid from Texas A and M Cooper boy he can play no oh, he's the real boy, deal boy, boy, he can play he's exciting mm-hmm. um but I just I just I, I cannot run this defense for Zimmer without the beef. And so I'm looking for beef. All over the place. I'm and, I, and, and, I, and, I, and I got to oh. get a center. I don't know why people don't talk about the center enough here. No, I, now, you can, now, you can get one. I, I, wouldn't, I would not take a center. Heck, I would not take a center in the first round. We can talk to somebody who, who, who specializes in draft for numbers of years and very connected. And they just said, you know, your centers you can get later. He says, you know, and with this class, he says, you know, round two, three, they can get they can get someone. But he said, you know, round two, you should be able to get one of the one of the top top four. Unless it comes down to a guy that you absolutely have done your due diligence on, and you know that he is a for, plug and play guy. Now, I'm look, you did it with you you like you just said, hey man, you were upset about the Travis Frederick yeah. draft, and it, and it worked out for the Cowboys. Either way it goes, you have some gaping holes, and I'm I'm look. Defensively, you've got to find a way, and I'm you 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 won me over on your your scenario there. So I'm saying defensive line, let's address that first. And if you can get a guy like the one from West Virginia in the second round, man, that's payday all day. You, I think everyone would be satisfied there. But still, there's still so many needs that you have not addressed. You're right, but I got but right there with that one, my scenario gives you two plug and play right away, which is. Nothing you got out of last year's draft. The only plug and play you had was a free agent kicker. <laughs> but, back, but, back, but back to what Danny is saying about the linebacker position, even if you do that in the first and second round, you still have no depth behind Overshawn, who, but who that's is coming off. Yeah, <laughs> no, right. That's what he's not, he not even considered depth at this moment. No, he he is a, he's a starter. That, that come round three. He, no, I'm saying he's not even he not ready to play. Like he is going to in his first year. I'm not. Last year was red shirt year. Right. We heard it coming up. In his first year, he's going to be coming out here, coming off of a very serious injury, and we're going to have to see what it is. I, I, like we I, have I, no, I, we have no I'm idea with, what it is. There's there. Look, there's more rounds and no, more no, picks. No, 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 no. But, but yes, Listen, these I, are, Danny, we're you. There's they, they got a. This is a. This is a whole bunch. You trying to plug in? There's a this, bunch of leaking this, holes. This, this, in my, there, this is my issue with plug and play, and this is why the draft is tricky because we thought we had plug and play last year. We sure did. We yeah. thought we had plug and play last year. I just like to hit people, and it didn't. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so that's. <laughs> I took New York. Lose weight. <laughs> Get that food away from me. I don't want spaghetti. That slim fast drink. <laughs> well, see, it didn't always work out that way with the plug and play guys, man. Man, man was stressed out. They, they had an off year. They had an off year. You know, after they, they've had a lot of success. They had an off year. It was really off. Um, I, I just would suggest not going to Ann Arbor anytime soon. And I know McCarthy and some other folks went up there. I'm like, oh, gosh, get out of Ann Arbor, please. Let's take a break. Man, you see it in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Go to Baton Rouge. Go to man. Manhattan, Kansas. Come on now. You didn't, down, you didn't down me. We got it. The kickoff rule has changed. Uh, special teams guru Danny McCray. I want to get your thoughts. I know you love it. On that. Uh, next, <laughs> with Heckman Harris and Danny McCray of New East Scruggsbury Church. I today, play us on Hockey Matos Titos on DallasCowboys.com no, no. radio. I know you love it. 
To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more, the bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or any time you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at Get Jack Black dot com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip that's get jackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip i'm dak prescott quarterback of the dallas cowboys and they snap it to prescott who looks right it's not there he escapes left he'll run for a first down just like football when it comes to crypto it's important to have a team you can trust with blockchain.com i know i'm in good hands since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back to the Players' Lounge. Saddle up for the country, sip and stroll in the Star District on April 17th. Enjoy theme, sip and bites, country music, photo moments and photo moments, gift shopping, exclusive off offers, complimentary Western takeaways and more featuring over 15 participating shops and restaurants in the Star District. Get your tickets at the All right. Country Heck stroll. Harrison. There you go. Get that Luke Combs on. The Luke Bryan, which one's a, which one's a big star? Man, you know, Frankie Beverly and Maze. Beyonce. <laughs> they won't be. Beyonce. She won't be. The she's the biggest country star right now. <laughs> Cowboy Carter. <laughs> Stay away from that, dog. We got too much got going it. on. The culture is under attack right now. Oh, yeah, man. Man. I mean, I'm from Houston. We we've been doing the radio for a long time. They ain't new. Y'all in Dallas, Fort Worth, Stockyards up there. Y'all been up there? Mm -hmm. Of course. You you a cowboy? Have you ever it's you a ever ridden a horse? Kids you ever ridden a horse? You kids are born in Fort Worth. I, 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 I ridden a horse when I was younger. I'm, I'm not a. That's not, not, not something that I enjoy. I'm from, I'm from Houston. We got the rodeo. Have you yeah. ever ridden a horse? Yeah, one time. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. See, but this, this this is what I see when I'm down. Now, you driving down the street in Houston, you see dudes on the side of you know they, they in the media and on they on they horses. Like yeah. that's that, I grew up seeing. That. I wasn't I'm not a horse rider, but my child teaches people how to ride horses. Yeah, yeah. really? Second, second, yeah, yeah. She works at a horse uh, horse camp, and well, the you other learn one, something new every day. Yeah, so it's not yeah. a culture second thing. Like, over there, so. everybody do everything. But yeah. I, I, the rodeo has been one of the biggest events of. Never Since rode a rode horse up. in my life. I, 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 I'm with you. I'm trying to keep that streak alive. Uh, <laughs> trying to kill myself, but my children do it, and they, that's their thing. But black folks, been, black folks have been doing horses forever. That's cow. The name cowboy. Go look that up where it came from. First one. Ah, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um, <laughs> the NFL. <laughs> The NFL has decided to change the kickoff rules. So, XFL coming to the NFL. Uh, uh, Jeez. Danny McRae, our special teams uh, guru with the Cowboys. Your thoughts on this, and how does Bones Fossil make it work for the Cowboys? Uh, Listen, they, they've they been, since I played in 2010, and probably prior to that, they've been trying to find a way to make the kickoff a safer play. Because when I got here in 2010, even in college, it was the wedge, right? Yeah. They had guys who would just sprint all the way from the 30, 
to the guys that, that were in the wedge, triple team, double team, put your helmet in the middle, and yeah. dudes was getting concussed <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. So you had like almost after even the touchback, you see dudes laying on the ground with the limp. The touchback was the worst. It was, bro. It was, you got it. it was, you it got it, it for dangerous. nothing, man. And then so then they moved it up. So then it was more touchbacks. And then now they're trying to find a way to still make it an exciting play. I think the, what they were explaining was the crowd is waiting for the beginning of the game to start. Right, the Jets fly over and all that stuff. Everybody cheering. And then you know most of the time, ninety percent of the time is a touchback. And then you know the offense yeah, just run out there. Out. So they trying to like make it be a part of the game. So I do appreciate that because I respect special teams guys and they need to feel like they're a part of the game. This rule, I think it's going to be exciting for the first year. I think seeing how um, <coughs> special team coordinators figure out ways to try to, I don't want to say trick the system, but pick guys and, and make sure the guy like Turpin, if you have one of those dynamic guys, one of those guys gets you a 40, 50 yard return because those are game changing plays. I think it's going to be really exciting. I think Bones Fossil is probably up there in the lab or been in the lab ever since he heard about this. And he's been figuring out ways to make it look kind of like an offense. Yeah. I'm, it's going to be some picking plays out there, dudes trying to get confused, some trickery, some fake handoff with, with reverses. It's going to be an exciting play. So for the first year, I'm excited. I want to see how it looks um, and see if the other guys are able to figure it out. But I I think it's a good move. What I'm not going to do is let this game pass me by, by being (laughs) one of those old cats that's like, oh, (laughs) because I hate everything about everything when there's a rule change. You know, look, like you said, man, it came up during the time where you were running head first into a wedge. If you wanted to get on the field, that's how you did mm-hmm. it. Um, and it was a tough guy role for a lot of guys that are right now, you look at these guys in their post-playing days and say, maybe that was something that wasn't good for the game. So the game is changing to that degree. Now, you want to make it more interesting and for the teams to score, they just did that because, mm-hmm. like you said, you're going to be in a situation where you only got one level to get through, and you don't have to worry about anything. And a guy like you know, like the, the Turpin, it makes his job even easier because he doesn't have to read a whole lot coming through that first level. So, look, I think it's going to get a lot of guys fired. Oh, <laughs> As yeah. you mentioned, it's going to get some some offensive coordinators up out of here. And you got guys like C.J. Goodwin who have made their name. You're, you've made your name uh, in the NFL by playing special teams. So, look, I, I think the way that they dumbed it down, I think it took a lot of that away. And you had guys like yourself just saying, look, I made – the roster based off of what I did in those situations. So hopefully open this up still gives players an opportunity to make a roster by being a full-time special teams guy. So, you know, you know, who's going to get fired. The whichever uh, special teams coordinator has the mindset of a Dan Campbell, right? (laughs) That guy, I'm going to just keep on trying it, right? Because I know it's going to work and I trust my guys enough. And instead of, kicking it out of the end zone and taking it at the 30, you're going to keep giving your guys a shot, and somebody's going to have a two-touchdown two game yeah. with another two 40 or 50-yard returns, and you're going to see that coach get fired. Mark mark my words on that. Some <laughs> off, some uh, special teams coordinator this season that's coming up, you're going to get fired midseason. I would try to sign Cavante Turpin to a contract extension right now. <laughs> right now. Right now. Uh, because – This kid can make plays. I've watched him in college extensively, and this is made for him to get busy. Can you imagine a Devin Hester with this rule? (laughs) They're not kicking it. (laughs) Bro, the the five yards ain't worth it. That's why I'm saying special teams coordinators will get get themselves fired by looking at a guy like Turpin and knowing what he can do and saying, I'm going to try to lock him down on the 20 or 25 instead of just kicking it out of the end zone and taking it on the 30. Forget the touchdown aspect of it. Okay, that, that's your hope. Mm-hmm. But if a guy like Turpin, you make one guy miss, he next, gone. Not, not maybe not gone, but it, you he can easily get this thing yeah. to the forty, yeah, 40 to forty five. Yeah. Yeah. And and now you're playing with half field. That that's what I'm looking for. Hey, a touchdown break that'd be great. But if he just is able to use his speed and make a couple guys miss, now now you're really putting your football team in some business here at the set the forty forty five. And, it, and it's a lot easier to pick up a couple first downs and then you're a kicker out here. I mean, you think about that, the way you could switch this thing. If Turpin can get you to a 40-45, get a couple first downs, and you send out Brandon Arbor. Yeah, it's a wrap. And, right. We can do that and, all day. And, and, <laughs> your, and, your, and I will fire my coordinator. 
Okay. But <laughs> let's see if he did that week, twice. After week one, I'm like, hey, bro, if, he keeps kicking to that, you. <laughs> if you can get that two <laughs> times in a game where you're able to, hey, he, he hits it up here for some really good yardage, a couple first downs, you send out. If that's six points, that's that touchdown. If you could almost give yourself a touchdown each week because yeah. that team, the team you're opposing, wants to be that dumb, and you could tell you people like Sam Williams, don't make a, 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 boy, we can, you can be a business here. So, uh, John Fossil should be in the lab having a really good time about what the possibilities could be. So, I'd be giving Kevontae Turpin a, an extension because I think this rule is made for him. You and, handing out extension? We ain't got no more. So we just talked all that about <laughs> you handed out uh, an extension to Kevontae Turpin. We ain't even seen that we got happen yet. We got four million from Dak. <laughs> just give it to yeah, Turpin. Man, yeah. give it, that's the guy. That too, that's the guy you want. Hey, man, if if, if you got to find some points somewhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can't to, block. You can't run. <laughs> you yeah, you go depend on, a, depend on a dude with shoulder surgery right there to the D-line. So right, you, better, you better go get it. A- <laughs> what you guys think about the hip hip drop before we go, before we get up that's, out of here? Let me tell you something. I, I, I I understand what injury they're trying to stop, but if you want to just make the game impossible for the defender to be able to make a play, especially in a situation where somebody's like, well, you, I, I like to tackle guys from the front. Well, what if you chase them down? Yeah. What are you How do you to do, do that? You just do run that? them into the end zone? My job is on the line. Like, I'm here to make sure that I do all that I can for my team to make sure we win. And now it's just so many different thoughts that you have to have in your head when you're trying to tackle a guy. And it's going to cost somebody some games. Like, that is going to cost somebody – a game, a fourth down stop, and the hip drop, and he was short of the, uh, of the first down mark, and now it's a 15 yard, and they and they and they going to win the game. I Scoring's think. going up. It's, it's this year difficult. Or- Scoring's going up this year because you keep legislating the game to make it very hard for the defensive players. So that's just going to increase scoring because, you know, all right, you can't touch this guy. You know, you, you, you breeze the quarterback's helmet, so that's a flag. Now, oh, I tackled him here wrong, and this particular referee says you, you touched him on the hip. I mean, you, you're just going to keep making it harder, heck. And look, man, I think initially when I saw the, the horse collar, the first time I saw it, I said, man, that's going to get some people hurt. First time I saw it, like, you, you can't tackle like that. Mm-hmm. And – and I was happy that they took that out and so the guys couldn't use it anymore. Hip drop is one of those things. That I've seen like Aiden Hutchinson, in class example, when we played Detroit last year, Aiden Hutchinson tackled Dak and he, you saw him, he dropped down. I was like, man, that's, dude, come on now. You know what you're doing. I'm not saying that he's trying to hurt Dak, but I'm just like, you can't tackle guys like that. And I, and I and I understand even from the Tony Pollard, dude, you saw the t- tackle that broke his mm-hmm. leg, you know what they're trying to take out in, in in that aspect of guys getting hurt, but I just it, it begs the question of what do you want defenders to do? Yeah, because how do you get back down though? Get fired? You, you just can't let go, go at his knee. Can't, I can't. You can't go at the knee. You can't go at the kid the hill. Can't go. But you know the you know the sack <laughs> that I'm do? talking about. You know the sack that I'm talking I, about. And I, 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 and I'm you. saying you're dragging him down and you're trying. I mean, but you you. Bring all of your body weight down behind this leg. It's just a da- it's a dangerous play. And again, I-, I don't know how if you're Aiden Hutchinson that you 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 tackle Dak. And is he's big, he's strong. You're trying to get him down. Thank you. That's the that's, next thing. He's gonna try to move. Out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, it's not like you're hitting a stationary target. He's just trying to get away from <laughs> you. Put some same. flags on him. Man. It's coming. It's, we're on our way. We're well, definitely flag. on our way tell, to it. Tell the, tell the offensive guy just fall down then. Just tell just fall down. If that's the case, don't get don't try to get no extra yards. Hey, when you fit, if you getting chased down from behind, right? Somebody somebody wrap you up to try to bring you down. It's your responsibility to go ahead and fall, so they don't have to pull you. Biggest thing I hate too is on a, you see a guy on the screen. He catches the screen as soon as he turns around. The defender is in his legs because he has nowhere else to go. He has nowhere else to go. He can't. He can't anywhere. Next day, he can't, you know. If you've seen guys get blasted, and they it, call him dirty, and they call him, they call. Oh, he a dirty player. The coach you know, come out. He dirty. Oh, oh, what he, is he supposed to do in that situation? Because if he hits him, it, you know, look, it's unnecessary roughness. Fifteen yards, either way it goes. Or do you, you know, break a guy's leg and he's out for the rest of the season? It's crazy, man. I, I just thought that all these changes that quick. Yeah, you know. hard on defense, though. It's hard on defense. It's tough. It's tough. All right, uh, let's play his last for this week. Yeah, we'll come back uh, next month, right? Next month, hopefully, we get Barry Church back in here. So. Easter, Good Friday coming up. Good Friday coming up. Easter this weekend. Y'all have a good time. Easter egg hunts and all that good stuff. Yeah, Mine too. Old for that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, you know. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. We'll be thinking about it. Danny McCray, good stuff. Heckman Harrison, good stuff. Appreciate it, bro. Chris, Jazz, Joshy, 
Will, everybody a part of the uh, show. We appreciate the Players Lounge brought to you by Tostitos. We'll talk to you next week. I'm Nui Scruggs. We're out. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!